in mental health research in low resource setting. So this is a collaboration between the Aga Khan University, Cambry Welcome Trust, a University of Michigan and Dalhousie University under the funding of National Institute of Health. So just to start with the introduction, wearable technology basically means uh, electronics or devices that can be used to track different things that we, we use, like we wear them. So wearable technology has been gaining a lot of popularity in the recent times within the healthcare space, where we find that we use wearable technologies to be able to identify certain illnesses, to be able to prevent and even manage different kinds of conditions. So we find within the African space, it has gained popularity in management of cardiovascular illnesses and also at the same time in terms of fitness management. But uh, within the high income countries, the story is a bit different in the sense that they've progressed more, where we find it's not only used in management of cardiovascular diseases, but also in management of other illnesses, including mental health. So in, in the recent times, we've been trying to check in terms of what is Africa really doing when it comes to use of these wearable technologies in management of mental health or within the mental health research space. And one of the things that we are able to find out is that there's no much uh, use of wearable devices or wearable technology in management of mental health and in management of mental disorder. And one of the, from a study that was done in South Africa around dementia, one of the things that they were able to see as a limitation is the cost of infrastructure in using wearable technology. And at the same time, the issue around technical know-how, how much is access, how much are we able to find and how much are we able to use as a continent. So with that, uh, in this study, uh, we were able to use wearable technology to be able to identify indicators of mental disorders and the uniqueness about our study, it's on a very unique population. Those are our healthcare workers. So most of the time we've always focused or centered around patients, but this time we're looking at the healthcare workers themselves. So for this study, we wanted to see how could we be able to use like wearable technology in terms of uh, mental health. So the objectives of my presentation uh, is to be able to assess the challenges that are associated with the use of wearable technology in mental health research in Kenya. And secondly, to see the availability of infrastructure. What kind of infrastructure do we have that can be able to support wearable, the use of wearable technology? And thirdly, to see the issues around data protection, data privacy matters, considering it's the use of wearable devices or wearable technology, and at the same time, it's mental health research. So how, what issues around data protection or data privacy are there? So we'd ask ourselves, why is that important? Why should we know about wearable technologies? So one of the things is because there's limited research within the African setting when it comes to the use of these devices. So the fact that we are among the few studies that have begun, especially I would say in Kenya, because the ones that are there currently are not focusing on mental health. A majority of them are looking at uh, a few on climate change, and the few that we have mostly have not spoken into the healthcare provider space. So one of the things is to be able to improve uh, the research methodologies that are available. Because through the lessons that we get, through the feedback, back that we receive, we are able to improve these research methodologies. And secondly, to understand what kind of infrastructure do we have. So as we proceed, we'll see in terms of the technological infrastructure, what exactly do we have. And thirdly, to also understand the ethical consideration, because we've said there are issues around data protection on it. So what, uh, what is available to us when it comes to research that involves wearable devices? Because you can be sure there's a uh, there's requirement for access of a lot of personal data. And finally, to ensure that there's uh, reliability and validity into our findings. So I'd like to explain where this study was conducted. So in our research setting, this study was done in Nairobi County, and our focus was uh, four healthcare facilities, one private tertiary facility, that's Aga Khan University Hospital, one national referral uh, hospital, that is Kenyatta University Teaching and Research Referral Hospital, and two county referral hospitals, Pumwani and Mamalusi. So the reason for the selection of these study sites and why they were appropriate is because we are looking at healthcare providers. And one of the things is there's a difference in terms of how the systems operate, in terms of how does the private institution operate, how does a national referral uh, facility operate, the kind of population they serve. So I wanted to see in case there's a difference in terms of uh, you know, the feedback or the outcomes of the people within these different settings. So for the methods, uh, based on this, as I mentioned, uh, this is 
a section of the qualitative part of the study because it's a whole hub of a study that we are still doing. And I only focus on the, the qualitative aspect in terms of uh, what are some of the findings from a pilot study that had been conducted. So we used an in-depth interview, uh, we did in-depth interviews with participants who had been in the study for a duration of three months. So they had participated in a pilot study that involved the use of wearable technologies uh, and matters around mental health. So with that, we were able, as an, like before exiting, we were able to get their feedback in terms of their experiences, what did they learn, considering it's a new thing, and at the same time, what were some of their recommendations. So we had 21 participants who were represented from the four facilities, and uh, in this, uh, we were just checking about the experiences on the wearable device itself, the software application, and also their recommendation, as mentioned. Yeah, so I would like to give us a snippet in terms of what kind of data were we collecting even before we go to the analysis of the qualitative aspect because we need to understand what exactly were we doing. So for this study, we, we were collecting different, uh, like we had like different scores in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of depression, anxiety, positive and negative uh, suicidal inventories. We were checking in terms of their COVID experiences, work-life stresses. Uh, perceived medical errors for physicians, and at the same time, the work hours. And uh, with this one, it was more like our baseline, and from there we were able to collect uh, other passive data using a Fitbit Inspire 2. As you can see on the background, there's a smartwatch. So that one is a Fitbit Inspire 2 that we were using to collect certain passive indicators. That one we were collecting sleep, uh, their sleep patterns, their uh, activity rate in terms of the steps they cover, and also their heart variabilities. So uh, this uh, kind of, uh, what we did on this is that we were able to deliver this application online. It was very web-based uh, kind of study. It did not use the, the traditional use of questionnaires. But ideally, we were presenting to them the forms or the, uh, the assessment through an application called My Data Helps. So My Data Helps is a kind of application that is able to deliver the, that we are able to use to deliver the assessment. And besides that, there was also a daily affective mood question. So for the affective mood question, for the duration they were in the study, every day they would need to respond to a prompt question on a scale of one to 10, how was your mood today? And uh, the Fitbit, they had to wear it most of the time, if not 100% of the time. Uh, for us to be able to collect their data on sleep, their data on the steps they covered, and, the, and their data on heart rate. So I would like to explain how that system operated. So first, we have the Fitbit watch. So in order for the Fitbit watch to be able to communicate to an individual's phone, it required the setting up of an application that can read the, uh, the information from a Fitbit watch. So that is a Fitbit application. So once data is uh, collected from the smartwatch that the participant is wearing, uh, it would be synced into the Fitbit application in their smartphone. So from there, uh, we needed also to push it to another level, that is my data health application, for us to be able to receive it. And also the issues around protection and the system in which the data is coming in to ensure that we had a system that ensured there was a uh, like there was maximum protection of the data. So we were using, uh, we were using the My Data Health or My Data Health application. So that is how the system operated. And it meant that a participant needed to, to have their, like a smartphone for them first to be included into the study. Like the inclusion criteria first was a smartphone. So uh, because my presentation is around the challenges that they experienced for the duration they were in the study, I will look, I'll present the results in three ways. So first, I uh, will look at the experiences with using my data health application. So that is the application that we were using to administer the survey. And secondly, I will look at their experiences in terms of the Fitbit application. The application that is able to read the information from the watch to their phones. And thirdly, their experiences with having to wear that watch. Because as I had mentioned, they needed to wear this watch as much as possible. So I'll start with the experiences in relation to my data health application. So one of the challenges that the participant faced uh, was in terms of the affective mood question, the daily affective mood question. 
as I had mentioned, this is a question that they needed to respond to on a daily basis. So they always, uh, like they had issues around uh, not being able to remember, having different work schedules. So it was sometimes very difficult for participants to consistently fill out the affective mood question on a daily basis. And also uh, for us, as a study, what we had done, we had ensured there's a prompt notification to them. And this prompt notification came to them at 8 p.m. Kindly remember to fill out your mood survey. So the other glitch that the participant first uh, was in terms of sometimes the confusion in terms of the prompts in the system. Because it's system generated, you find like they would receive so many uh, prompts and to the participant, it resulted into participant fatigue because like how many times do I need to respond to this? And uh, something else, uh, it's also in terms of the preference for the dashboard. So as you had seen the dashboard that I showed, uh, I can just go back. Sorry. So as you can see on that phone, that is how the dashboard appears. So a participant is able to track their own data over a period of time. You can track it for a week, a month, a year. You can see actually how your mood has been in terms of all the days that you've been able to fill. So they felt like uh, we had mentioned to them that we were collecting steps, we were collecting sleep, mood, and heart variabilities. But from our dashboard, there was no, uh, there was no, like they could not track their heart rates, how they have been. So that was also one of the feedback that we received from the participants where they felt like we needed to tailor this to receive, uh, to be able, for them to be able to see everything that you also collecting. And uh, for this, because this study, we were also adopting it from a study that had been done in Michigan, uh, which is called the Intern Health Study. The focus was mainly around the three. So when it comes to issues around uh, the storage spaces, the cost implication around it, it became a bit difficult, even as we went into the main study, to include uh, the heart variability bit. And then the Besides the challenges that they experienced, uh, we also had very positive experience, as you can see in the quotes that we had. For some, they felt like the features supporting automation of data synchronization were, uh, commend were commendable. So you find like a participant does not need to sync the data. Automatically, it syncs. Once you're able to, once you're able to like, switch on your Bluetooth for some few minutes, and uh, ensure that you're within internet connection, automatically the data uploads. So to them, they felt that was easy, rather than the whole process of please sync your data or uh, more notifications. And they also felt it was user friendly because they were able to track their own metrics. Most of the time you do research, you wait for the findings maybe during dissemination. But this one, it was real time to them because a person was able to track their own indicators. And secondly, when it comes to experience with the Fitbit application, some of the challenges that the participant faced. So one of them is that uh, after beginning the study, we realized that the Fitbit application was not compatible to all uh, operating systems. So we had participants who had gone through the entire process, fill out the surveys, but when it's time to set up the, uh, the watch, you realize that their phone is not compatible. So anyone who had an Android version 7 and below, was not able to participate in the study because uh, it does not support uh, Android version 7 and below and even certain uh, iOS systems. And uh, secondly, we also found that uh, for, the Fitbit to, for the Fitbit watch to sync with the application, it required a connection. But after setting up, it would disconnect after some time. So you find like uh, a participant's data is not coming in for certain days. So when you, go, uh, when you check or when you ask them to check, you realize that the Fitbit has disconnected, uh, the Fitbit application has disconnected with the watch. So those are kind of, uh, the kind of challenges that you also experience. And then secondly, for data to sync between the watch and the application, it required synchronization. The second level is where there was no synchronization, but the first part there was a synchronization. So a participant needed to manually, uh, you know, like go through the process to synchronize their data. So for this, they felt it was a challenge because every day they are getting a prompt, please switch on your Bluetooth, please uh, activate, uh, you know, please activate your, your survey, something like that. So you find like, for them, they felt it was cumbersome uh, to keep synchronizing. And that's where some of them uh, even felt like, uh, like they could not continue because of that. But again, positive experiences, they found it very user-friendly. And we can see from the quote, someone was like, it's actually user-friendly. It's just that part of it, not syncing. So the issue was talking about the synchronization. That's a direct quote from a participant. And then finally, the experience with the Fitbit watch. So the watch itself, how was the experience in terms of using it? So for some, after some time, the watch malfunctioned. The screen went blank. It stopped charging. 
and for others uh, because we intend like what we needed is for participants to have these watch as much as possible so it was water resistant so they could swim with it or you know uh, do whatever they needed to do with it but for some if after using it they realized like when they for a few when they swam with it after that it went on water lock mode and they could not activate it back so that was a challenge when it came to the use of the watch and also the fact that bluetooth consumes too much power so they felt like having to activate or having their bluetooth on for the data to sync they felt like it was consuming too much power and uh, besides that when the battery for the when the watch uh, had a battery low it was very difficult to syn to synchronize it would take longer and uh, besides that we also saw like uh, sometimes the bluetooth notification for some of them were not working so it took long like somebody would not know what the process is when the notifications did not come in but also there was positive experiences in terms of some of them felt like the, the watch inspired positive behavior besides being part of the study for a mental health research they felt it inspired positive behaviors in the sense that they were able to track their own indicators know how many steps they've covered for the day and be intentional about it so for some as as much as they were participating uh, in the study, it also had other positive behaviors. So challenges of setting up the digital tools. So besides what the participant felt, what about the research team? What are some of the challenges that we experienced? So one of the things that we saw is uh, sometimes the notifications not working in the sense that there's a disconnect between the this, uh, the application themselves and actually what the participants received. So this was purely online. So we depended on sending out emails. We depended on just uh, sending notification from the system. So sometimes you find uh, participant, participants not responding or the response rate is low. When you follow up with phone calls, you realize that they did not receive any kind of uh, feedback. So one of, the things or the, uh, one of the things that we did was to ensure we took our application uh, emails through a spam tester to ensure that uh, when they are received by participants, they do not go into their junk. And then something else is we find that uh, we had a mental health uh, resource. So in the initial question we had from participant is in the event that I go through all these assessments and then I realize there's a, a, like I have an issue. So where am I supposed to go or what am I supposed to do? So for that, we created a mental health resource, but initially it was not integrated within the system. So it was difficult for them to know like where do you need to reach or where do you need to seek help? So we were able to integrate that within our system. So in the main study that is ongoing within the, uh, within the platform where we are sending out the assessment, they are also receiving the mental health resource. And at the same time, we also see that the mood uh, notification was not initially linked directly. So you find a participant has to go directly to the application that I showed earlier for them to fill out the mood. But we had to, to reinvent this. And so when a mood pops up on your on your phone as a notification, you are actually able to click from there and respond rather than going back into the application because for some they felt it was tedious. Another challenge is the space that it took. Participants had to uninstall some of the applications they had for them to be able to accommodate this to participate. So in terms of the space, and some of them were not comfortable. Then the other issue was concern over confidentiality of data. We had to do a lot of sensitizations. We had to, to ensure that we made